After Buzz TV, starting place to the likes of WWE female superstars Kathy Kelly, Sonya Deville, and Zelina Vega proudly presents Women's Wrestling Weekly, the world's first podcast and YouTube series dedicated exclusively to women's wrestling, featuring all the latest news as well as interviews with top superstars in the industry. And now, After Buzz TV's own gorgeous lady of wrestling, TK Trinidad. <laughs> And I am not alone. I have some amazing folks with me, amazing co-hosts. We're going to start. She hails from the valley. She is the farmer's daughter. I've yet to meet Farmer Albert. Please welcome Emily May. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here for another week. It's exciting. I know the beauty of technology. And know, right? our new <laughs> and our new co-host. You have to check out his Instagram. I'm thoroughly impressed. I have to take some of his moves. But uh, he has <laughs> which is in uh, Melina's um, which is uh, Melina's kind of intro dance. You can see him doing it on the couch all the time if you follow his IG. Please welcome <laughs> Brian Santos. Hi, guys. So excited to be here. Me and MJ were talking off screen. I feel like she's my spirit animal, so can't wait to get into this with her. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. And I'm going to tell you a little story about MJ that MJ doesn't even know. However, you know, <laughs> I just, oh, I just, I just announced our guest before, before I did the intro. But, you know, this is, this is live. This is what we do. Uh, she is a sports entertainer. She's a singer. She's the leader of the Marvelous Ones and a whole lot of women. Please welcome MJ Jenkins. Hi, y'all. Hey, welcome. Woo. Woo. Okay. okay, so, so uh, here's the backstory with, with MJ and I that MJ has no idea. So essentially oh what gosh. happened, <laughs> essentially what happened, we're on episode, I keep on forgetting to count how many episodes we're at right now, but we're on episode 100 and something. Um, but I first uh, noticed MJ when, well, I first noticed you, MJ, when you are in the May Young class, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman's amazing. Her hair is, uh, like, just everything about you. And my thing was, I kind of knew that once, like, sometimes um, WWE and WWE in general is kind of a, as far as getting interviews, as you guys know, if you've been following us for a long time, sometimes a little bit harder to get interviews from folks from WWE. So I wanted to make sure I got MJ before she got signed, because I knew she was going to get signed. And I wanted to get her before she got signed to WWE, because I knew it'd be a minute before I ever, like, get her on the show. So I sent her emails, I DM'd, I did all this other stuff, and no response. So it was just kind of <laughs> one of those things where it's just, <laughs> it's like, when, when we found uh -oh, out that, like, <laughs> I'm like, in. <laughs> I think TK's so, holding holding this in. A right? Bit. <laughs> oh, I think she's been me. harboring some feelings. <laughs> oh my Not goodness. at all. I, the long story short, I am so happy that we finally got you on the show. And, you know, the beauty of technology. My thing is, I don't give up. So it's not one of those things where I was offended and like, oh my gosh. She doesn't. She's not yeah, it's not, it's not one of those things. It's one of those things that it's like, you know, eventually it's going to happen. Yeah. This show's not stopping anytime soon, but I just want, I often like to let folks know that's like, hey, like you've been on the radar, like you should have been on the show like a year ago, but it's okay. <laughs> you are forgiven and you're on the show now. Forgiven, girl, <laughs> bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Kind of let's uh, just start off uh, from the beginning. Like what, what got you into wrestling? What's your passion? Oh man. So like growing up, right. Um, this was just something that me and my family members always watched. Like, you know, we always watch, you know, Raw, SmackDown. Um, I remember growing up, you know, when Impact was on Spike TV, I would watch Impact Wrestling. So I was just, always a fan uh, growing up. I would even go to like the live events and all this other stuff. So I just grew up liking it. And I grew up like while other kids were busy playing with Barbie dolls and stuff. I had my Barbies, don't get me wrong, because, you know, <laughs> but like there would be like a mattress and then there would be like the playground. And me and my brother would be doing like swan time bombs off of the slide. And got in trouble for it you know I, I kind of told like a little a little lie I was like no mommy it wasn't it. but you know <laughs> that was just me so it was something that um I knew I just always wanted to do and um after like I graduated high school you know I I tried college I left uh, <laughs> I went back to school for like a business communications and then you know, like one of my teachers was like, just as a goal, you know, write down all your goals that you want to do in life. And I wrote down like professional wrestling as like my top goal. 
And one thing is like, I erased it and put something else and then put professional wrestling second. And so my teacher, I remember her name was Kay King Jack. She was like, come here. I was like, oh crap, here we go. I know she's gonna say <laughs> something like, you know, and she was like, well, I noticed that you had written professional wrestling here and then you erased it. Like, why would you put it second? Well, why did you erase it? I was like, oh, you know, you know, cause sometimes, you know, it's not really like a job job. It's not anything that's gonna, you know, help me out with the skills that I learned here. She was like, but is, is that what you want to really do? I said, yeah, I really, she said, then do it. You should do it. And we just had like a full blown conversation. Turns out her son was like a collegiate wrestler and she just pushed me to do it. So after, you know, doing the college and then the, the business school, I was like, well, I'm going to go for what I really want. And yeah, that was that. That's history. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Teachers are so inspiring when you have yes. someone that's going to push you like that. Um, when yeah. you when you started uh, training and going through that process for the first time, what was that moment that you knew that you really <laughs> wanted to be a part of this business? Because it's it's it's, uh, it's tough out there. <laughs> oh man. So I can say so. I remember the first day, um, and I started training at a world of unpredictable wrestling, Johnny Rods in, in Brooklyn, New York. He's a, a WWE Hall of Famer. And Johnny has this way of trying to like dig into you to really see through your soul to see if this is really what you want to do. And he like holds no punches. And I was just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I'll do it. No, I'll come tomorrow. Like nothing like there was no fear in me. Like once I stepped in that building and like I saw the wrestling ring, the moment I took my first bump, oh Lord, it was just like, yay, it hurt. And my head was like, woo. But <laughs> it was just like, I, I, th I was just, I think it's just, that moment of actually walking there, having that interview, stepping in the ring, I just knew like, no matter what, like this is just what I wanted to do. And um, in, in the training there was so vigorous and they would, I, I would stay there from at least three until like the lights were being shut off and they would have to kick me out the ring. And um, I had uh, one of my trainers, um, Roger, he would just be like, do you want to do this to be a diva or do you want to be a wrestler? And I would be like exhausted physically doing it over and over and pushing myself through it. And that's just, yeah. Once I got into the ring, like I, I just knew, like I knew I was going to put up with, if I could put up with, <laughs> with everything I was going through there, I could put up with anything else for sure. So yeah. but tell us about like your character and your look. Like it's one of those things where um, with with some wrestlers, they 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 just don't have it figured out. Like they haven't figured right. out exactly what their what their 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 avenue is. And for mm -hmm. you, it's just like you had you had it and yeah. or you have it. So you know what inspired you? Like you, you just have it together. Like character wise, there's no <laughs> there's no issues. So what inspired you to you know create this character or is this just this is just you? This MJ. So the truth is the character isn't necessarily a character. It's just me. It, it's it's me and it's me times a thousand. It's like me mixed with a lot of sugar and some vanilla and, you know, it's like little Powerpuff Girls, but it's, it's everything it, uh, minus the creation because it was actually me that it was just all of my inspirations. Like, I love to sing. I grew up singing. I would record myself singing. And if I wasn't, uh, if, if, if I hadn't chosen to do this as my main path, I would have been a, a singer, you know? So that's where you came from, you know, uh, me, you know, singing my entrance live, you know, when I'm performing, me singing in the ring, me doing the Afro pack. My thing is like, I've, I've had my hair natural for so long that it was, it was just something that came natural. So the me saying I'm Afro vicious and oh so vicious, then me doing my Afro pad, you know, girl, you pat your hair cause you got them braids, you got that sewing, you got something that's like, eh. And you know, it was always something that people were like, why are girl patting her hair? And it's like, no, I'm gonna pat my weave and I'm gonna be a-okay, you know? <laughs> so really the, a whole lot of woman is just everything that I am. It is all of my confidence, all of my sass and it's just, it's just really me accepting myself. Um, yeah, like accepting myself as 
MJ Jenkins as being like black and proud and being outspoken and being like, just honey, it's just, it's just really like being myself, you know? So it's just something that's accumulated from like my influences, even from, uh, stop it. My puppy's whining (laughs) is, is even things from like movies. Like I'm a huge fan of, um, Beyonce, you know, so, you know, the movie she was in, you know, when she says she's the clear passion, she's a whole lot of woman. It's like, no, I'm a whole lot of woman, you know, like I'm MJ Jenkins. I'm a whole lot of yes. woman. It's just, you know, so really everything that the character is, you know, is is just me and from inspirations and growing up and, and things that I like, really. So that's why I'm able to just do it and be. And, you know, it's, it's not like, hey, there's just something we want to give you. Try it out. I, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> no. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I want to know, like you mentioned being black and proud, which I absolutely love. And, you know, there's yes. we are definitely seeing more representation in the wrestling world for, you know, people mm-hmm. of color, especially black women. So do you yeah. think there's still work to be done and what can we do to kind of show more visibility for, for black women? Um, I absolutely think there's still um, more work to be done. Um, you know, I, I do think it's good, like uh, people out there that 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 is being represented. However, I still feel like it's it's I, I don't ever I don't I'm not at a place to where I feel like it's enough. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think it's really important that we all work together, you know, to um, to to put ourselves out there, because at the end of the day, if a certain company, you know, has like, OK, we can only have this and this and this because they need a representation for everybody, then no matter how many opportunities are there, sometimes a minority group may still lack in getting that opportunity. And that's not to say, oh, company's racist. No, it's just like a demographic thing. But the more we work together and the more that we support one another, like like out of nowhere, I know you guys, um, if you did see um, the photo shoot that uh, we did, mm-hmm. that yep. was literally Bianca Belair saying, we have so many girls here and not that many like are being represented not and everyone knows that hey we actually have a whole team of melanin over here so you know her just being herself you know and and just wanting to promote like women and and wanting to promote all shades of brown that's how that happened so her just being herself and wanting to support us made that whole uh video and photo shoot happen and and then it became a thing you know all all over social media so i feel like the more that we um support one another the more that we stick up for one another especially if we know something on shady (laughs) maybe going on you know together we're we're stronger separate we're stronger together than being separate so yeah i think that's what will make the change for sure i love that so you started in 2015 um like that that photo shoot was everything for me i absolutely Mm -hmm. loved it we did cover it on the show yeah yeah we did um you started in 2015 as far as let's let's talk let's talk a little bit more about hair as far as hair is concerned did you have did you find promoters just wanting to like change your look to conform to the masses or did they allow you to just be who you are so i actually started training in 2010 but i did get my break i believe the 2015 was when i got with uh, when I did like a show on Evolve. Like that was one of my first times like um, breaking out in a major company per se. Um, So (laughs) I can say that I've heard certain things from different people that told me I needed to, you know, Europeanize my look more because they didn't think that certain companies would like it, you know, because of what they saw all the, you know, girls of color that were being used either had the straight hair or the different colors or they had the long flowing weave. And my thing was the moment I stopped being what everyone else told me I should be, even with my character, because I'm from Brooklyn, New York, you know, uh, some of the projects that's right near Marcy projects where Jay-Z is well known, like everyone thought that I was going to be this uh, uh, rough, tough Brooklyn girl. And I'm like, (laughs) there's so much layers in how don't try to confine what it is to be black or brown. Like we're not, we cannot be conformed. So I've had people tell me something like, oh yeah, you know, you're not going to make it just because I was, you know, um, black or I had people tell me I needed to change my hair. But 
the interesting thing is certain companies like WB, they, they didn't want me to change that. They absolutely loved it. Um, you know, I remember my first, um, I, I did a tryout uh, at the Arnold Classic and um, mind you, they had these helmets, these little helmets, people who didn't know how to and for safety. And mind you, I had my Afro out. My Afro was like, you know, like like the twist outs like you have, but girl, it was like, um, boom. Massive, my Afro was yeah. big, cause you know, honey, hair thick is thick. <laughs> so uh <-huh. laughs> my hair was out there and I was like, uh, I think maybe I should straighten my hair or maybe put this in. Uh, Matt Bloom was like, hold on, straight, no, 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 no. He said to me, why would you do that? He said, for one, I'm pretty sure you don't need that helmet because it looks like you know what you're doing. And I was like, yeah, I do. And he was like, two, your hair is perfect. Don't change it. It, it makes you stand out. It, it makes you unique. No one else is doing it. Yeah. Keep your hair. So that was like 2016. And mm -hmm. any even when I did like, you know, impact, you know, Gail Kim was one of my biggest supporters. She absolutely loved everything about me from my hair, from my look from everything. So uh, from other people, like what, what mattered, I never got like the pushback to be something different. It was, it was really embraced. So I really appreciated that. Yeah. Now uh, let's get into, you know, the news type stuff. Um, so you were recently were released from a WWE, but you did an interview and you talked about, you know, I, I, I was, I'm kind of sad too, but I don't think, I don't think it's the end. The show oh. has, we we predict things. So this show, you know, I don't think it's the end for you. But um, after, like, you you did say in an interview that, you know, it, it, you had a chance you would go to AEW. Uh, who mm -hmm. would your first match be against? Or what would you want your storyline to be? Oh, man. There's so much. Uh, I could say I would love to do, like, this whole, like, intergender tag team storyline like i would love to feud with um penelope um uh, yes. definitely um I, I i would love to feud with her um and you know i they have so much great men there so you know i'm sure i could be <laughs> teamed up with somebody i i i would definitely love that just because i love the dynamics and the like the feeling that you get you know when you it's, it's just everything combined i think that would make um major major it would, it would be something uh, really really uh, great yeah yeah, so that's just one thing off the mind I can I can really say definitely with her. That would be so exciting. Um, yes, I I would love to know like looking back at your time in WWE, did you yeah. have as you were training at the Performance Center, and uh, did you have uh, a a favorite trainer that you just loved working with, and uh, how was that whole process? Ah, uh, so my favorite trainer definitely is uh, Norman Smiley. <laughs> Oh man, because Norman, he he pulls no punches. And and even though he pulls no punches, when he tells you something, it's like a little funny jab at you, you know, yeah. <laughs> certain things. But uh he's just really um the importance of wrestling. It, he is so attention to detail on everything that you can spend and you can spend an hour with Norman and you come out knowing at least five or more things that makes the biggest difference. So um, that whole process of being there with him uh, was was a, a extremely, extremely great. Um, when I first started there, I was with um, Robbie uh, Brookside. Um, he, oh my goodness. He, in, in my opinion, he was like the, the blow up king. <laughs> he tested you to your limits and it was like, don't you stop. And we had a, like his, his Brookshire shuffles. Oh my gosh. He would make sure like he would, he would do all these things to test your cardio, your footing and your, your, your capability of like moving fluently. Oh man. Um, it was just really fun there. And um, the, the most thing that I really appreciate being about being there was a lot of times we had so many uh, guest coaches you know, uh, different people coming through. Uh, we had a lot of people that were that were there and already moved on even outside that would always come back and we were allowed to pick their brains and everything. Like, oh man, the, the, the rock came. 
he was there, you know, uh, John Cena came by, he was there. Edge, you know, has come by, you know, um, some some of the women on the roster would come down and, uh, you know, talk to talk with us, you know, uh, train with us, you know, uh, Natalia Wood um, and uh, Mickey James, you know, I, I was in the ring just, you know, training and just putting my body through some stuff and she's just sitting there watching me. And I was like, Hey, Mickey, what do you think about this? And all of a sudden, just boom, like, <laughs> it, it was just really, like, incredible. And um, not for nothing, I'll tell you a story. My second week of being there, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're all sitting around, and we're just like, okay, we have a little townhouse meeting, okay? And then in walks Paul Heyman. And he has his little strut. Fuck you. You would have thought he was walking. You would have thought he was walking. Like, like, like you would have really thought he was walking in with Brock Lesnar from his flag. It's like, <laughs> and I was just like, and everybody was like, ah! and I was like, oh, you know. And um, before I knew it, I was in a promo class with Paul Heyman my second week in there and they're picking people left and right to go. And I was just like, uh-uh. And I was like, y'all better put me in this class. If I'm not in this class, I'm mm. And all of a sudden <laughs> I get up and I go in there and I do this promo and he was just like, he was like, didn't you just, didn't you just get here? I was like, yeah. He was like, how long, this is your second week? I was like, yeah. He was like, who, who trained you? Who, who, where did you, where did you? I was like, oh, uh, Johnny Roz. And then I've been at uh, the Dudley Boys. And he was like, I am going to tell them, thank you. Yes, this is what we need. This is a star promo. This is what we need on TV. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He was like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even have any critiques to say. I mean, uh, Man, this is if WrestleMania was to happen and something was to go wrong, we need people like this to come in here and just talk and get the crowd. And I was just like, in my mind, I was just like, thank you, thank you. But it's I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I was just celebrating and everything. But you know, it's just you know, being there and having those people of such a high caliber to to work with, and then knowing that everything that you are is like on point. That was just like. You know, that was like a, a highlight for for me for being there for sure. Oh my god. That's gosh. amazing. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> I want to know because we talked about like, you know, what's happening for you next. And you mentioned your oh. singing aspect, your musical aspect. So I want to know if you want to dabble in more of that, you know, like release an album or anything like that. Oh my goodness. I I absolutely do. And the funny thing is, I can be so like timid about my voice that I'm like, oh he doesn't like it but like when I would sing all the on all the live shows everyone would be like that is that, is that MJ they were like oh my gosh she can really sing sing like sing so definitely I I most definitely want to um want to do singing more I even want to like go into roles like acting roles that is around mm. uh, surrounding singing so what I am going to do I did start a YouTube channel and it's, um, it's Marvelous MJ. So I'm like, you know what, to start off, I'm gonna start just doing covers, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, stay tuned, because on my YouTube channel, you're gonna start seeing me doing cover songs and that's how I'm just gonna slowly and steady, you know, released. I know an album takes so much work. So I'm gonna start with doing cover songs and then you'll see a single here or there. Yes, love I love that. It. Who's your favorite wait. person? Yeah, that sounds so exciting. Who's your favorite person right now that you want to cover? Do you have like your list? Of Lizzo, artists? Lizzo, oh for God. sure. I love her. Like, like Lizzo is an embodiment of of absolutely like what is a whole lot of woman too you know because yeah. you know somebody could be a whole lot of woman somebody could be a whole lot of man somebody could be a whole lot of anything like that's just right. owning yourself and being true to yourself you know so Lizzo she is um you know especially for women of like you know more full figured curvy but you know you know sometimes they don't be getting that love that they need when they should be mm -hmm. you know so I just love everything that she is so definitely Lizzo 
I'ma definitely cover my homegirl Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? Well, not homegirl. Yes, you I have feel to. like I know her. <laughs> I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Beyonce. I did. I did. Um, when I used to live in some of the project, when her and Jay Z was at Marcy and they were giving out toys on Christmas, guess who ran? I ran all the way from Sumner and I went to Marcy and I saw her. I was like. Oh, Yes, like that's my that's my first time ever seeing Beyonce and being like hands reach of her. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna definitely cover her. Lizzo, Beyonce, um, and Normani. I like her too. Oh yeah, she's good. Oh yes. So well, another thing I've noticed is that you know, you the the bad news happened with WWE, but you mm -hmm. didn't let it stop you. Like you hit the ground running. Like your social media didn't stop. You created a whole YouTube page. Even mm -hmm. prior to that, you have, this is what I really um, love, even beyond wrestling as far as people in entertainment, you're, you're a brand with or without that company, whatever company mm -hmm. it is. And you know, one, I wanna know, is this like all of you or do you have like a team or what, it, like what, what, what kind of kept you going with all these projects? <laughs> So, um, after like a day or so of sobbing, <laughs> um, like I just knew that I had to do something and, um, you know, I, I have, um, a lot of like really good friends that would like, just keep me in check and let me know like, okay, this happened, but you got to keep going. So, um, one of my friends, um, um, he has actually been helping me create the website. Like, he's like, hey, okay. you want to get on something? What do you want to do? Like, I have this thing here. What are you doing? And I was like, oh, I kind of want to do this, but I don't want to, you know? And then he's like, nope, let's do it. I got this website. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to need shirts. I'm going to need a logo. Then I realized I had fans. You know, there's this uh, one fan. He, you know, he did like this design art for me, like just a while ago when I was still signed. And I went to him and was like, hey, did you think you could make me something for a shirt all of a sudden he came out with just so many different things so it's really just like you know a team of of friends and then like more support and somebody you know um you know my friend um zen lucia you know he already had his his website that i'm on so i was like oh okay well let's let's go so it really is just like a, a support team of like you know certain people calling me helping me out you know um diana has been really helpful too with me you know with um which is getting me in contact with certain people to make sure that i have like a certain amount of income coming through you know um mm -hmm. even uh certain people from nxt they've called me like hey you know <laughs> after this clears up, if you're still out there, you know, by so-and-so and so-and-so bookings to come up, you know, it's just like a, like, I'm so thankful for like the relationships that I've built with people because that's made me, you know, keep going. And I got a photo shoot coming up. Ooh. So, <laughs> yes. 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 so me some more. <laughs> was there some, was there any advice that, that your like support group and friends and people at NXT and WW gave you oh, to man. kind of help you get through this, this rough time? Yeah. So I'm gonna be honest, like everyone from, uh, X-Pac, you know, he, he was one of my mentors, everyone from X-Pac to the coaches, um, you know, um, Scotty to, um, even medical, you know, people in medical, um, Na uh, Naomi even reached out to me, you know, and, and me and her are cool, like Bianca, it's just been like such a, you know, Casey Cotton's out, everyone has been reaching out to me and um, they're just telling me, you know, like a mixture of different things, like, you know, this place, you know, even though this has happened, you know, this doesn't define you. That was the main thing because I think so many people hold the being at WWE such a status and they think, and then because they know it was a dream of mine since I was a little girl, you know, you know, you think that if that's gone, then that's it for you, you know? So I feel like when several people told me, you know, like this doesn't define you, you know, you define you, you know, I've gotten the, you know, MJ, you, you are so talented and you are a rare breed. There's something everything that you are is something rare and you have something special to offer to the business it was like so you know this place is not the end all be all and just know that you're going to be okay because you have such raw and authentic talent like you're going to be okay and um i would get different messages you know like just keep your head up if you ever need anything you know we can talk anytime just hit me up anytime um it's just really everyone telling me like 
some people were extremely shocked too. They were just like, no way. Like, you know, uh, one of my good friends, um, Brianna Brandy, you know, they were just trying out a tag team with me and her. She couldn't believe it either, you know. Um, a lot of people wasn't shocked and uh, they were just like, you know, everything about you, you have so much charisma. You can get on that microphone and rip it like no other. You have a natural connectivity with fans. They was like, so hearing all of this and the everything they were doing, they were just building my confidence, building my self-esteem, and they were taking away all of the, the pain that I was feeling uh, from my personal, from losing, you know, father figure to also my professionally life. Like, you know, everybody was being uplifting and letting me know, like, you're going to be okay. And not just that, you know who you are. So right. it, it won't, it won't be, even if it's not this platform, once you get on another platform, whoever it is, you're a star, like you're a star and you know it. And just because it didn't get shown to its full capability on this platform, guess what? It's going to be somewhere else. So right. that's how I wake up I, I literally woke up uh, this morning and I, this was one of the days, cause you know, I'm, I've had a, a Tanara, um, she's actually been like supporting me and we've been talking back and forth and just like, you know, speaking with her too, it's like, she's like, MJ, you know, you know her little sexy accent, like MJ, <laughs> you, you are, you are, you know what you are, you know what you're capable of. So everything's going to work out. Basically that was the gist of it. So that's yeah, what's yeah. kept me going, you know, the, the whole support from everybody. And then me waking up and being like, honey, you are all that in a bag of chips. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the thing to do with WWD, we often see them, um, you know, bring people back. And yeah. you know, the 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 good thing, like I mentioned before, as far as character, like you have everything that that it, that it takes. So it's one of those mm -hmm. things where, you know, when I did hear the news, I wasn't necessarily like, oh my gosh, well, where is she going to go now? Or we're never going to see her again. You know, that happens yeah. to some wrestlers because you know they're not really in it because of the love of wrestling. We all know that. Right. So it's one of those things where you know I didn't I I, I didn't worry. Because, right. you know, it's only a matter of time. Um, but, you know, you did touch bait or you touch a little bit about uh, COVID-19 and how you lost um, your father figure, your brother-in-law. Um, mm -hmm. With that, you know, my frustration, because I'm kind of essentially going through the same thing uh, you are as far as family members. Um, mm -hmm. What do you have to say to folks who are just, they're not, they're, they're, they're still going to the beach and they're like just trying to live their best life is like no people are legitimately dying young and old what do you have to say to them um the problem is I feel like most people they feel like they're invincible you know like I feel like most people think that they are invincible and certain things they always feel like oh that's not gonna happen to me it happens to someone else you know um I would just say count your blessing like and be grateful. I don't wish for anything ill to happen to them or to happen to someone that's close to them, but um, they should really be careful and move with caution. If they say, wash your hands, wash your hands. If they say, you know, wear a mask when you go outside, I'm not gonna lie, I still go outside. I take my, my puppy for walks and all that stuff. But me, I have a mask, you know, um, just take it serious because you know, this is a, uh, this is nothing to play with. And, um, you don't want to be the cause of someone else getting sick and you don't want to get sick and cost yourself, you know, your own life. So I, I, I just would take it serious if I was in their shoes. Yeah. Um, Emily? Do, yeah. Do you have, um, I know a lot like WWE and AEW are, are starting to kind of do these empty arena uh, shows, you know, we've seen that in the last few months. <laughs> yeah. how, I mean, how do you feel like it's changing? This is going to change the wrestling industry. Well, I think this is only temporary. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad it's only temporary because yeah. the thing is, you, you need the crowd there. No, I, I don't care what anybody says. Yes, you know, both companies have been doing a great job. I actually enjoyed uh, WrestleMania. I watched it like yeah. it's it's great. So I just think that like, <sighs> luckily this is only for a short period of time because the truth is you need the crowd. You know, like we feed off the crowd, the crowd feeds off of us. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a, a call and response. So yeah. when you don't have that call and response, you lose certain elements that makes moments special. 
you know, like, you know, it, you know, like you got to think about it when it was The Rock versus John Cena and they turned their head from side to side slowly like this <laughs> each way they turned their head the crowd the went crowd. nuts yeah. chant one him and yeah. then they changed to chant the other side like certain things like that or when some of the one two three and the pop goes off or the clap to it like it's 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 a feeling like that's why wrestling is so real and it's so authentic because no matter what you feel it you know so I feel like the the feeling is the the realness of the feeling is is missing and mm -hmm. um, luckily, because of people have been so vocal and they're adding, they're being a little bit more dramatic with their characters and, and their promos are, are even more like, it, it, it's making everyone step up. That is the yeah. good thing. It's making everyone step up to be more animated and going for it more promo wise. But um, we definitely need the, um, the crowd there. So hopefully when everything turns back to normal and this will be, hey, it's COVID-19 season, just like, you know, the flu is another virus. It's gonna be, hey, it's flu season. It's gonna, I, I really believe it's gonna turn into, hey, it's COVID-19 season, hey, it's flu season. You know, just be safe. It, you know, I feel like once that's over, everything's gonna, you know, be okay. So uh, yeah, let's say, you know, let's, everything's gonna be okay. And let's say in, in my, my, my universe, WWE's like, oh, we made a huge mistake. You coming back. What would be <laughs> your storyline? What would be the storyline? <laughs> yeah, take that one. The tea. The, the tea take the one. <laughs> well, I'll take something. So, like <laughs> what storyline um, did you like, do you, you want to do or did you hope that, you know, you could have done? Uh, ooh, excuse me, I love a little bird. Dang, that was strong. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Oh man, what storyline would I want to do um, if I was still there, or or if I was to come back? Um, oof. I would say I just really the main thing I would want to do is just to be introduced because that's the most important thing. Like you know, um, a lot of people know know a bit about me. However, it's like the whole gist of who I am and what I can do in the ring um, has yet to been on full display. So I feel like that would be one of the main things is like, let's do the video packages. Let's do yeah. the whole shebang. Get all those promos. Like, yes, like let's give out those promos that you know I am well capable of doing and that you know I can within a drop of a dime, you say, go, give me the mic and I'm going, you know? So I feel like that's just one of the main things. And the main person I would want to work with, I've had the privilege, um, the like me and her had both had the privilege of working with each other. I would love, 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 love to work with uh, uh, Rhea Ripley again. Like, um, you know, we, we worked with each other for the Mae Young Classic. However, like everything that she's become so much more and now it's like, I would love to crack at it again. And mainly because we're so different from each other. You know, when you put the different type of people in, in the ring together, even the way that she talks, her whole in, her whole body, her whole presence, everything is so day and night towards me, that that in the ring wise and storyline wise would just make something, you know, um, it, it extremely, extremely special. Um, I would definitely love to feud with, um, with Dakota Kai. <laughs> she is uh oh man and everything that she's doing now and this new uh character and then she has Raquel with her oh man let me tell you me me and my uh me and Raquel have had some amazing matches that if you guys were to see oh my goodness oh my goodness I think that is that is a story to be told because the the, the who uh MJ Jenkins is you know I, I'm, I'm not going to be alone either. So I have my posse, my backup crew. And then it, you know, it just makes a whole, you know, mind blown uh, thing. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> so now, uh, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of women's wrestlers? Women's wrestlers. I'm going to say uh, Sweet Georgia Brown. Yes, she is the first ever um, African American uh, NWA Women's Champion. She would be there. I'm gonna say uh, China. She's definitely gonna be there. Um, yes, definitely. 
I'm going to go with Lita as well. Oh, man, because uh, growing up, I'm telling you, I was that girl who used to be like, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. And I wanted to be cool like Lita, you know, like, I remember, we all like, did. <laughs> yeah, like, I like, man, Dan it, Dan it. like, she was the reason why, like, I, when I first started training, I would just want to do high flying moves all the time. I would jump off the rope, head scissors, hair around, and boom, boom, boom. I would do all the stuff because she's just so, she's just so uh, unique. Um, yeah, so let me see. How many people is on? Okay. <laughs> so, right. and then, like four or five, four, you know, uh, yeah. So I'm going to definitely say Alita, uh, China, um, Sweet, Georgia Brown, and who? Who's one more person? Me. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> Ain't no woman much more without MJ Jenkins. Whole lot of woman. Yes, I'm uh-huh. up there. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so we're gonna get into uh, rapid hot tags real quick. So what's gonna okay. happen? I'm gonna ask you a question. You're gonna say the first thing that comes to the top of your mind. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> always early or always late. Always early. <laughs> uh, what is the one thing you love about yourself? My smile. Who would play you in a movie? Tiana Taylor. If you were a crayon, what color would you be? Turquoise. And wow. if you were to watch, uh, if you were to listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, Beyonce, Dangerously in Love. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> See, yes. so good. Yeah. So now, I love it. So now uh, we're gonna Emily's gonna bring us some news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh we got some news going on, and uh Sports Illustrated released kind of an in-depth article today on the whole Mandy Rose and Otis storyline and how that was all developed. And again, because like that was like one of the big WrestleMania moments, and so Uh, It goes into interviewing Mandy and how she went into Vince's office and finally pitched it and that he loved it and um, kind of broke down how they um, started to work together with Sonya and Otis and kind of create this whole storyline. And uh, so it's a really great article if you want to break it, kind of break down how this whole partnership happened. And I love Otis. He's one of the most like lovable characters right now and I love kind of Mandy Rose and them together so uh if you want to look at that that's on Sports Illustrated um how do you guys feel about that whole storyline and their their partnership and kind of love story happening love it so much we talk about it so much on the Smackdown After Show especially leading Mm -hmm. up to Wrestlemania it was such a huge thing loved how they portrayed it such great storylines great way they mix all the different storylines together including Sonya including Dolph so I absolutely mm-hmm. loved it. And I love the payoff of WrestleMania when she came down, slapped the hell out of Sonia, and she was like, this is it. So love it. I, I want to read that article for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you guys. I'm, de- <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I was definitely for it. Like, I mean, we only have, what people fail to realize is there's there's only a couple of like basic storylines and then you just build mm-hmm. off of that. Like if you look mm-hmm. at Star Wars and all those other yeah. ones, it's like biblical. Yeah, it's like stories, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, so they're all, they're all the same thing. It's just what what's, the individual does to make the spin that to kind of bring you in and Mm -hmm. um i love the fact that you know that this was mandy's idea because sometimes and i'm sure mj you can you can attest to or if you don't want to you don't say anything sometimes (laughs) these storylines are just like really like just no creative like you know what we're just gonna they're no longer friends anymore i'm like really (laughs) all right i i loved it because it went so in depth and it had so many different layers and it really made you go oh oh there's a video oh who's this oh what's that oh it was you know it's so many levels it feels like you're watching like a soap opera that's right. that's that is really what ties us all into wrestling is like the storytelling and everything going on behind it so and growing up I always loved the love triangles I always yeah. loved it. that is one thing I'm a, if I was to ever do anything with any company, honey, because I'm going to be a star wherever I go. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to do a love storyline. Just make mm-hmm. sure he's hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, us, tell us in WWE who, who would be the guy. What? What kind of thing? Uh-oh, see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's so Okay, 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 okay. Putting her on the spot. Oh my God. Okay. So this is. <laughs> if 
you don't want to, you don't have to. But you don't have to. I'm going to answer it because I'm about that life. I know punk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would love, okay, at NXT, mm-hmm. I would love to be in a love storyline. This is someone who's just started having uh, matches on Raw with <laughs> Tahuti Miles. Ooh, he just started out. Okay. He's, oh man, Tahuti, he's, 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 he's incredible. And now let's see on the name. <laughs> Maybe I should be quiet. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, there's like the main roster. Oh, man. Oh, it's so many people. <laughs> okay. Throw your number one, your top. <laughs> top one. Like okay. Okay. My top one. I would love to do like a love storyline with Shayna's. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. If I could. <laughs> All right. I'm for that. I'm, I'm for here that. for it. I'm here for it. We're going to start writing it right now. Yes, <laughs> honey. Send it to me. I'll have, try yeah. to help you get my job back. I'm yeah. like, look at this. Do- <laughs> look what I have. <laughs> Things happen on this show, so we can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Speak it into uh, existence. <laughs> anything else, Emily? No, that is the best news story that I got for today. <laughs> And then uh, we have Bryant with the star of the week. I love that. Well, I'm super excited to talk about our star of the week, who is Nia Jax. She has been killing it since coming back after post-WrestleMania. So, so dominant as usual. Of course, we know she's a former Raw Women's Champion, had a great one with that title as well. But now she's just kicking butt on her way to Money in the Bank. So she has qualified for the Money in the Bank ladder match, which we all know is going to be this corporate ladder climb. We're so excited to see how that's going to go. I believe it's going to be very cinematic and very, very interesting to see. Um, But yeah, just shout out to Nia Jax because she has been killing it and can't wait to see more of her with this next run she has. Yes, I, hope I love her. I'm so happy she's back. Yeah. I hope this one's gonna be a dominant one for her. For, uh, for oh sure. yes, for sure. Well, the time has come. It's time to pour another glass, there, MJ. Uh, we really, <laughs> we really appreciate it. <laughs> we really, really appreciate uh, you know you for coming on the show. You know, it's 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 been a trying time. I, I think for all of us uh you know yeah. on this show and uh you know outside of the show and people who are watching um so i really appreciate you know for you coming on the show because you could have said like nah i ain't doing that we ain't that yeah you know i could have dodged you like you said yeah. i did exactly you know, I, I, mean, dodge dodge girl girl I, I mean it wasn't it wasn't an official jo- dodge i just took it like that you were busy so i didn't take no it was no offense i knew i was eventually gonna come on because you know why women's wrestling weekly is the number one women's wrestling show on the planet so we're gonna get everybody eventually so mm-hmm. i'm not i wasn't worried whatsoever but i am <laughs> entirely grateful and thankful for you coming on the show i really really appreciate Thank it you. um tell everybody one where they can find you first they should be following you already but where can they find you just yes you so you can find me on instagram at real mj jenkins on twitter at real mj jenkins underscore you can purchase my merch from a whole lot of woman.com that's not lotta it's a whole lot l-o-t of woman <laughs> and stay tuned to my youtube channel marvelous mj jenkins because um some new content's coming out yeah. yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that so thank you again for joining us and miss emily me. may Thank you. And Miss Emily May, where can everybody find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Emily May Heller. I can't wait to see your see your YouTube channel and, and listen to all your jams. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Santos, where can everybody find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at the Brian Santos and catch me on the SmackDown after show. And thank you again, MJ, for joining us. Uh, for thank my you. folks out there, my WPW Warriors, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to us on any of the podcasts, five stars are better, because that's all we accept, because we're number one. And um, for WPW Weekly, make sure to follow us on all social media platforms, on IG, Twitter, etc. As for me, you can follow me on everything at TK Trinidad. Till next time, guys. Ciao. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.